Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Corvette Ed's Garage. As you can see, I'm still in recovery. I just seen the surgeon and I still got five weeks to go. So, five weeks of doing nothing. Now, I got plenty of footage that I'm pushing out, so be on the lookout because they're coming. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I just finished installing the uh, Duralic fan on the Corvette. And what a fucking nightmare that ended up being, thanks to the uh, intercooler. But that's okay. If you haven't uh, haven't seen the last episode, I'll put it up here somewhere. You can go ahead and click on the card. So in this episode, we are going to work on the wiring. We have to pull the American Volt harness out, then follow up with the connections and the new harness. Now it dawned to me that the Dorelli fan that I installed in this, it's a two-speed fan. But we're going to be adding a twist in this episode. Not only are we going to have the center activate the fan, we're going to add a toggle switch to the first speed. And then when the temperature sensor kicks on at 180, it's going to activate the second speed. In previous episodes, I'll put it up here, I showed you the method of using a negative ground to your toggle switch. We're going to have to get another harness and hook up a whole new setup with the toggle switch. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on to the uh, inflation of the harness. The addition of new fan with the Durali uh, fan, it's running uh, 22 amps. Now the American Volt one that I wanted to put on here originally, that's all, that was only running about 14 amps. So the wiring that I had for the um, American Volt 14 gauge looks pretty thick, but they trust me, it's 14 gauge. That's not going to work with the Durali. I ordered the uh, Durali electric fan harness. So that one comes with the main wire is the R12 gauge, so that's going to uh, work for this fan here. So let's go ahead and uh, pull that puppy off. Okay, removing the pre-existing um, American Volt harness, which is 14 gauge to a Durali 12 gauge harness. Really hate going over my work twice, but it's pretty much out of my control. I got two different manufacturers, one requiring a 14 gauge uh, harness and the other one requiring a 12 gauge harness. Although it's a little bit a pain in the ass to have to go through this again, but the best thing is it's kind of already pre-wired per se. I, I already have my uh, source ignition uh, to plug into, the fan to plug into, I mean everything's there as well as the sensor to plug into. About the only thing really that needs to be done is a toggle switch and more on that uh, later on in the episode. So now that we have the wiring removed, let's go on and prepare the Durali fan. So on with the installation of the Durali fan. First things first, um, I needed to um, install the quick disconnect from the Diwali fan to the uh, harness. Uh, in the event that I have to work in that general area, it'd be a lot easier, even if I had to pull the fan off, I could just disconnect it rather than uh, hardwire it all the way in. It's just, uh, we'll save headaches later on down the road. Now, I got the plugs off of Amazon my only requirements were that the uh, wiring had to be at least a 12 gauge. Not only did the plug have to be compatible with the 12 gauge uh, harness from Durali, it also had to be able to handle the 24 amp current, which this one here is rated at 46 amp, 16 volt, 46 amp. So now we're ready to sort the harness out, add the connectors that we need to add uh, on the Durali Performance I high output fan. Uh, here are the instructions, and I love it when a company uh, gives you the instructions. I mean, I, American Volt, they didn't provide any uh, instructions that uh, came with the kit. I mean, they might have some on their website, but I don't recall it being provided with the kit. As you see here, the wiring is pretty basic. You have your red wire that you know, goes directly to your battery. And the yellow wire, that goes to an ignition source. And we'll cover what, what I end up doing later on in the episode. And basically, the ignition source is the hot wire 
that turns off when you turn the key off. That's real important. Otherwise, your fan is going to continue blowing when the ignition is off. Now, your orange wire, that's going to be plugged into one of the wires on the fan. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, your air direction is based on the way you have your wiring set up. So basically, if you want to have a push or pull air direction, you reverse the wiring. The black wire, now that's a chassis ground, but you have a negative on the fan. And I did the same thing, I grounded it to the chassis. The green wire, that goes to a positive lead on your AC system. Now that's not necessary for my situation because we're just working with the auxiliary fan part of it. The AC system activates the main fan. Therefore the green lead is not uh, applicable to my uh, situation. Now of course, once you've got everything all wired in, that harness actually plugs into the relay and that's where all the magic happens with all that being said i'm just going to go ahead and finish this harness and we'll go ahead and move on to the installation now if there was something that you didn't understand then just uh be sure to leave a comment and i'll do my best in trying to answer it for you and one more thing you're going to have to get uh, a fuse uh, in place in between the battery and the harness you have to buy that separately with the Durali harness. However, the instructions on the Durali paperwork reflects that. But you got to give an attaboy to American Volt, though, for providing that in their kit. And in this case, it's a 30 amp system, so I'll be using a 30 amp fuse. <laughs> Now that we have the harness completed, it's time for the real work. I first lay the harness out as to how I want it routed. Once I'm happy with that, then I'll go ahead and start connecting the dot. By connecting the wiring to the battery, the ignition source, the fan, etc. And for safety, I do have the negative uh, cable to the battery disconnected until I'm ready to fire up the system. Okay, well, I already did the boring stuff prior and installed the loom to the wiring. It's a good resource to use the loom so you can protect the wiring from the elements. It also protects the hot lead in, in that harness from the bare metal. If it happens to ground out on the metal, it could be catastrophic. But wait, I know, I know. The Encore Vets fiberglass, this is true. But the Pro Charger interfering that I'm attaching that fuse to is metal. Now the rest of it is just finishing off the front part of the harness. That entails hooking up the negative relay ground wire to the chassis and positive wire to the quick disconnect. So once everything's all sealed up and completed, time to make everything all permanent and fasten everything in. Now the final step to zip tie everything together. Now I'm a firm believer when it comes to zip ties. I might overkill sometimes, but you know what? Bottom line is, is there's going to be a lot of turbulence underneath that hood. I want to make sure that nothing comes loose on me. I, I don't really want that to happen. If a belt broke loose and it happens to grab that harness, it's not going to go down without a fighting chance. That's for sure. Now we got everything all rewired. Um, I'll show you here in a second. Uh, I want to test it out, make sure everything works. Okay, everything's on. Oh, here we go. is uh, a success. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the harness in detail. That's my quick disconnect for the fan. Now here we have our relay along with our fuse, our 30 amp fuse right here. That is attached to the Pro Charger interfering. And as we go along, the harness is going around the supercharger, as you can see here. And right about here, let me stop it right here real quick. This is my ignition source. Now, you see that relay that's right next to my finger? Well, that's actually the relay for the main fan. So what I ended up doing, instead of trying to track down the ignition source and save the trouble of that diagnostic testing, I decided just to go ahead and tap off the main relay. The main relay already has an ignition source, so I tapped it off right there. And that's my ignition source. The yellow and blue wire is what I'm talking about. That is part of the harness. Now, as we go along, right underneath there is the positive lead from the harness to the battery. Now, the sensor wire, that's running along the firewall, making its way over behind the distributor. Then it goes around the distributor and then continues down the firewall. And those are um, adhesive uh, zip tight holders. Anyway, it runs down the firewall and it rolls right into the um, sensor that's attached to the head of the cylinder. Well, there you have it, guys. Not that hard, not that easy, not that hard. You just got to make sure you do your research when it comes to electrical because you don't want anything catastrophic to happen. Nobody does. Now, as far as the toggle switch to the first speed fan, well, unfortunately, this was a post-surgery decision. I, I, I didn't really do it yet, but I started thinking about it and after reading the instructions uh, that, I, that, the, that came with the uh, kit, the Raleigh suggests in order to use the two-speed fan, the first speed fan should have a lower temperature sensor. And then the second speed fan should have a higher temperature sensor. So what that's telling me is that the first speed fan needs to be running before the second speed fan kicks on. That was really unclear to me and I had some suspicions that this might be a problem. So I called the Raleigh and what they told me uh, was that I could not use a toggle switch for the first speed fan. Reason being is the first speed fan needs to be running when the second speed fan kicks on. Therefore, if it's not running and the second speed fan kicks on, it's going to burn the motor up. That's exactly what they told me. And that pretty much confirms my suspicion on that. But they also said I could use the toggle switch for the second speed fan. And actually that works out better for me because I can leave the 180 degree temperature sensor on the block. and manually activate the second speed fan with a toggle switch and and that would give me the full potential of what that fan ha has to offer that's how we're going to end up doing it. and i'll probably do that off camera it's not necessary to show you another video on a relay installation when i just showed you but that being said uh, thank you for watching uh, the channel thank you for watching the video i do appreciate it and if you got any value out of the video well consider subscribing comment, like, all the above, and we'll catch you on another episode of Corvette's Garage.